Head coach Willie Taggart will enter his third year at the helm of USF in 2015 and looks to turn several strong recruiting classes into an improved product on the field. Running back Marlon Mack was named the Americans Rookie of the Year in 2014 after he led the conference in rushing. Mack had four 100-yard games and five touchdown runs of at least 54 yards in his freshman campaign. Quarterback Steven Bench and Quinton Flowers will battle for the starting spots this summer. Bench has made three career starts, while Flowers made one start as a freshman last year. Whoever the QB is, he should have a capable group of receivers to choose from. Eleven potential targets are competing for three to four primary spots. The Bulls also plan to push tempo more offensively this year, as opposed to the more pro-style system Taggart has employed the last two seasons. Linebacker Nigel Harris led the nation with six forced fumbles in 2014. He's part of a USF defense that returns its top five tacklers from last season. Most of the front seven returns as well as a young secondary, which hopefully means a more seasoned unit this fall. USF's defense was solid against the run last year. The Bulls limited big plays. The secondary was young, four of the top nine were freshmen and three were sophomores. So with a little more experience under their belt, they should be able to make some big plays this season. Defensive coordinator Tom Allen is shifting to a 4-2-5 attack, which means more speed on the field. Special teams could be a bright spot for the Bulls as well. Punter Matias Chavati is among the top punters in the nation. He led the American and was 10th nationally with an average punt of 44.4 yards. Taking a look at the Bulls' 2015 schedule, it's front-loaded with several opportunities to make a statement against non-conference opponents. Two ACC opponents, Florida State and Syracuse, and Big Ten member Maryland. They will then close out the season with a stretch of five tough conference games, Navy, East Carolina, Temple, Cincinnati, and UCF. To talk more about the Bulls, we have Joey Knight from the Tampa Bay Times on the phone. That's up next. Welcome back. We're now joined on the phone by Tampa Bay Times staff writer Joey Knight. He's been covering USF the past three seasons. Thanks for taking the time to talk to us today, Joey. My pleasure. Glad to be here. All right, so the Bulls are coming off kind of a tough season. One of the major questions is the quarterback position. Veteran versus a younger guy, who seems to be winning the battle under center? Well, it's interesting. Uh, Mike White, uh, a kid who started a lot of games for them the last couple of years, has transferred. He, uh, he has transferred to Western Kentucky the day after the spring game. He went to Willie Taggart's office, stunned Coach Taggart, announced he was transferring. He seemed to have lost ground in this latest quarterback derby. As a lot of people know, USF is transitioning from a power-style, West Coast-style passing game to a uh, more wide-open spread thing, which has become obviously very popular in college football. And um, Mike kind of lost ground in, in that. Um, I don't know whether the Bulls coaches felt he wasn't as good a fit in that offense or whether Mike himself felt he, he, he wasn't a good fit, but he has moved on. So now the job is a duel between uh, rising sophomore Quentin Flowers and a senior-to-be Stephen Bench. Stephen has had his opportunities in the past couple of seasons sporadically. He's had a start here and a start there, and for whatever reason, has never really been able to capitalize on that. So I think the front runner going into preseason camp will be Quentin Flowers, a kid who played a little bit last year, started a game, uh, very mobile, uh, and his arm strength looks like, his velocity looks like it has improved from his freshman year to now. He just hasn't played very much at all, and he has not proven himself in a college game. So I think going into fall camp, those are your two competitors with Quentin Flowers possibly the front runner at this point, but there's, you know, that's why they have preseason practice, and you've got a freshman coming in from Ohio named Brett King, who I think is going to have a say in this race as well. You touched on it a little bit, but the offense has adjusted their style this season. Talking about playing faster, what effect do you think that will have on them this season? Well, that's the great unknown at the University of South Florida. Taggart, uh, you know, is a student of Jim Harbaugh. And for the last two years, he's been preaching a power run game uh, with some West Coast-style passing thrown in. Power, power, power. And it, it just, for whatever reason, has has not produced the last two seasons. The Bulls totaled six victories in the last two years, so now they're changing things to fit what they feel will be uh, their personnel a little bit better. Spreading the field, short passes, 
to set up uh, Marlon Bass, the 1,000-yard tailback last the American Athletic Conference Rookie of the Year. That's what they want to try to do, spread the field, get the ball to their playmakers, and try to create running lanes for Marlon Mack. Will it work? We, we just don't know. Um, we didn't see much in the spring game, only one touchdown, but, of course, the teams were completely divided up, so you didn't really get a, a good gauge uh, of what was happening there. Uh, because the teams are split up. So we don't know what this offense is going to look like with a full squad against another bona fide collegiate team. But they have revamped things. They're going to try this system, and they feel that uh, it suits them a little better in terms of their personnel. But we just don't know. We'll have to see. Marlon Mack, Rookie of the Year last season. How has he improved his game throughout the course of the spring, and what do you see him bringing to the table this year? I think Marlon could uh, very well have another – Thousand yard season, though Coach Taggart uh, continues to say he, he's very high on the guys right behind Marlin, Ernest Johnson, who's also a sophomore, Darius Tice, who had who had an outstanding spring. But Marlon Mack is the bell cow of this offense, and as I mentioned, I think ideally the plan is to get the ball in space to playmakers with a um, you know little short passing game spread type attack with an effort to increase and improve running lanes for Marlon Mack to do what Marlon Mack does. I, I think uh, he will be the uh, the cornerstone of the offense. He'll be running behind an offensive line that's going to be retweaked. Lost three really uh, good linemen, three veteran linemen who have played an awful lot, and those three linemen have to be replaced. So there's going to be some question marks along the offensive line. But if the if the passing game can loosen up defenses, force them to go to more nickel coverages and things of that nature, the lane should be open for Marlon Mack to have another outstanding season. Willie Taggart entering his third season at USF. Important year for him. What's a realistic, successful season for the Bulls? I think a realistic season for USF fans, and I think what a lot of USF fans realistically expect is a 6-6 six and six season, which would make the Bulls bowl eligible. But even, even that's going to be difficult. You're talking a team that has a new defensive coordinator, a new offensive coordinator, new offensive and defensive schemes. Uh, they're going to have a new quarterback and a, a revamped offensive line. And to top that off, you've got a non-conference schedule that has games at FSU, at Maryland, a game against Syracuse, and in conference play, the Bulls have to go to Navy, have to go to East Carolina, have to go to UCF. It's a very daunting schedule for an American Athletic Conference team. Uh, I think 6-6 six and six would be a very tall order for this team, but Coach Taggart has said this is uh, the best team, the most athletic team, the most cohesive team he has had, and it's going to have to be. From what you've seen this spring, what do you think will be a bright spot for USF this year? I think a bright spot would be defensively. Uh, last year, just based on the personnel they had, the Bulls had to go to a three-man defensive front, a 3-4 scheme, and it didn't really fit, fit them that well. Um, they gave up a, a, a lot of yards rushing. They gave up more than 400 total yards a game. You had guys out there in the field who acknowledged they were thinking too much about where they needed to go and where they needed to line up on this, you know, in, in this particular formation or where they needed to go on in this certain situation and it kind of impeded their just their free flowing ability to move around and make plays. Well now under a new defensive coordinator Tom Allen who has Tampa ties who coached a long time at the high school level in Tampa and eventually moved up the college ranks to Ole Miss. Um, he comes to USF from Ole Miss. He has incorporated a 425 scheme which is essentially a nickel formation to better counterattack the plethora of spread type offenses that the Bulls are going to see in this conference. Um, it seemed uh, to pay dividends in the spring, a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of athletes on the field, and that's something that USF does have. They have a lot of athleticism, uh, especially in the secondary, and I think it's just going to be a better fit for this team against the type of offenses they'll see week in week out in this conference. So if, if there's a surprise or an upgrade, I think it has the chance to be defensively. And lastly, are there any players that have stuck out to you this spring that could make an impact, maybe a name we haven't heard before? Yeah, there's a, there's a few. Uh, Raheem Bronson, 
uh, a receiver who didn't play much last year uh, behind Andre Davis, who's now in the Buffalo Bills camp. Andre Davis established just about every receiving record there is at USF. Well, he's graduated. Rasheen Bronson, number 81, um, played a little bit as a freshman, scored a touchdown against North Carolina State. He seems poised for a breakout year. I think you'll be um, hearing his name called a lot uh, defensively. Jamie Bird is the um, is the Husky or the Nickelback in this new 4-2-5 scheme. He was more of a conventional safety last year. You can see him all over the field uh, in the secondary, lining up on the edge, uh, even in the even in the midsection of the defense. He's that kind of athlete where he has the speed and the power. Um, to do that. He was the leading tackler last year with 95 and had a couple of tackles for losses and a forced fumble. You could see Jamie Bird all over the field. I think this Husky position fits him very well. Uh, he could be a, a first-team all-conference candidate. And, of course, the Bulls have whom I believe to be the best punter in, in the league, Matias Shabati, a kid from the Tampa Bay area. Had an outstanding year last year, averaged uh, 44.4 yards a kick, had um, 22 punts uh, pinned inside the 20. Um, just an outstanding punter. Uh, you know, unless he falls flat on the space, I think he will he'll be a first-team all-conference selection at the end of the year, and he will land in an NFL camp somewhere. All right, Joey, thanks again for taking the time to talk to us today. Thanks for having me. Again, Joey Knight from the Tampa Bay Times. USF kicks off their season at home September 5th against Florida A&M. For the American Digital Network, I'm Haley Outen. Have a great day.